Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being here. My name is Mike Depew, and I'm the Area 8 Fisheries Biologist from Somerset. And today we're going to talk about catfish fisheries in Pennsylvania. First off, I'm going to give a brief overview of the catfish species in Pennsylvania. We have 13 species that are native to the state, with 12 of those are currently present, one's considered extirpated, and these range in size from small mad toms of about three to four inches in length up into the largest predator in our state, the uh, flathead catfish. Of these species, five of them are considered threatened or endangered. Um, these include a few mad tom species as well as the black bullhead. Um, for day, today's talk, I'm going to focus in on the five um, species that support recreational fisheries. These include a few bullhead species as well as the common channel catfish and flathead catfish. Um, our statewide regulations are how we manage catfish fisheries in Pennsylvania. These include a 50 fish per day uh, creel limit with no minimum size. The first recreationally important group of catfish that I'm going to talk about today are the bullhead catfish. In Pennsylvania, this includes four species, um, three of which are common, the white catfish, the brown bullhead, and the yellow bullhead. The white catfish is native to the Atlantic Basin and can be most often found in the Delaware River Basin, uh, particularly in the Delaware River Estuary, although it has been introduced to a few lakes out in the southwest part of the state. The brown and yellow bullet are native to the entire state and can be found in numerous water bodies, uh, both lakes and small sluggish th streams throughout the state. Um, we typically do not stock bullhead catfish. Um, throughout Pennsylvania, their populations are um, managed by natural reproduction. Um, the state record fish is a four pound, 10 ounce fish, and typically these fish are smaller and to medium in size and only get to about 15, 16 inches. For those anglers who may not be familiar with the bullhead catfish species, I'm going to go over a few characteristics used to tell them apart. First off, much like a channel catfish, the white catfish has a forked tail, whereas the brown and yellow bullheads have unforked tails. In fact, you're actually probably more likely to confuse a white catfish with a channel catfish than the other bullhead species. But a white catfish has a much wider head than a channel, lacks the spots of a channel, and has between 19 and 23 rays on its anal fin whereas a channel catfish has 24 to 29 rays on its anal fin. As for the brown and yellow bullheads, both of these have unforked tails, and the pigment on the chin barbels uh, is dark brown for brown bullheads and light for yellow bullheads, and that's the best way to tell them apart. Fishing for bullhead catfish. Um, bullhead catfish are an excellent species to get beginning anglers, especially kids, into catfishing. As with all catfish species, bullheads have well-developed senses of taste and smell, so anglers typically use a variety of oily or fatty and smelly baits to entice them. I've personally always been a fan of a combination of hot dogs and night crawlers. As for gear, light action, spinning rods and reels, uh, basically similar stuff that one would use for trout or bass uh, with a slip sinker rig are sufficient in catching bullheads. Um, my favorite times of the year to catch bullheads are typically in the evenings, in spring or summer. Um, they're more active in the evening or nighttime. As for locations to catch bullheads, they're widely distributed throughout ponds and lakes throughout the state. I would concentrate on the edges of weedy areas around lily pads. Um, some of the best waters uh, for bullheads in the state include places like Presque Isle Bay, Shawnee Lake, Francis Slocum Dam. Nackby Dam, and these can be found on the Fish and Boats Commission's website under Best Fishing Waters for Bullheads. Moving on to the next species, channel catfish. Uh, this is the catfish species most anglers are probably the most familiar with in Pennsylvania. This is a medium to large size catfish. Uh, most anglers will encounter specimens around 15 inches to about 25 inches and 4 or 5 pounds. But there are quite a few fish that are 10 pounds or over throughout the state. Channel catfish are native to the Ohio River Basin and Lake Erie in Pennsylvania, but they have been widely introduced throughout the state. Um, we manage channel catfish populations through both stocking and natural reproduction in PA. 
uh, with around 35 lakes receiving annual stockings of catfish. Uh, typically, our larger reservoirs and our river systems have naturally reproducing populations, uh, while our smaller lakes are stocked. In Pennsylvania, state records of 35 pound fish from 1991, the Lehigh Canal, and the world records of 58 pound fish from the Santee Cooper Reservoir. Historically, channel catfish have been one of the least studied fish in Pennsylvania. But this began to change around 12 years ago with the drafting of the Strategic Plan for Catfish Management in PA. In the plan, we sought to identify gaps in knowledge in catfish management and examine some ways to increase catfishing. One of the ways we came up with to increase catfishing was the creation of Mentored Youth Catfish Days. Um, these were events that included intensive stocking of catchable catfish, uh, casting demos, cooking demos, and they were designed to get families out fishing for catfish. As for the studies that are recommended in the plan, uh, these included things such as ongoing spawning box work, yearling versus fingerling size at stocking work, and age and growth studies of channel catfish. And I'm going to talk about the latter two. The Area 8 office in Somerset conducted size at stocking studies on channel catfish on four lakes in the southwest region from 2014 to 2019. So we stocked fingerlings and yearlings at equal rates and gave each batch of fish a unique fin clip. For example, all of our yearling fish stocked in 2015 had a left pelvic fin clip, whereas the fingerlings had a right pectoral clip. We then came back and returned to survey these lakes in 2018 and 2019. Over the two years, we caught around 454 fin clipped fish, and 97% of these were yearlings. And Basically, this clearly demonstrates that yearling stockings are superior to fingerlings, and we'll likely be transitioning to more yearling stockings in the future, um, particularly in places where fingerling stocking has been unsuccessful in creating a fishery. We've also been conducting age and growth studies on our channel catfish on a statewide basis. Uh, this involves using otoliths or uh, inner ear bones to age the catfish. Uh, much like counting the age of a tree, you can count the rings on an otolith to determine the age of a catfish. What we have learned is that uh, we have some pretty old catfish in PA, particularly in the Ohio River Basin. Our oldest fish that we've recorded was a 34-year-old fish from Pima Tuning Reservoir. That fish was only 17 inches long. Uh, it's likely that was the oldest channel catfish that's ever been captured. As for growth, it's been highly variable among the populations. Some places they grow fast, others slow. Uh, one area that they grow slowly is the three rivers near Pittsburgh, as you can see in this graph. Uh, the fish typically reach around 16 to 20 inches in length, and then growth levels off. So essentially a 17 inch fish could be four years old or could be over 20 years old. And from our age data, we can also calculate mortality rates or the percentage of fish dying each year. And these typically range from around 10 to 15% in most populations, which is quite low and it's indicative of harvest having little impact on these fish. As for fishing for channel catfish, uh, when it comes to bait, I typically start incorporating slightly larger pieces of bait, such as cut fish, such as sunfish and shad. Um, as in, in my repertoire when I'm fishing for channel catfish. Uh, the gear that you want to use is slightly heavier than what you'd use for bullheads, particularly if you're targeting fish in the 15 to 20 inch range. And these include light to medium action rods and reels, pound test line, maybe 10 to 15. And you want to use a slip sinker or bait holder with a bait holder or circle hooks. And you can see a picture of our basic slip sinker rig down here. As for timing as for fishing ch for channel catfish, pre-spawn in May, day or night is an excellent time of year to catch channel catfish. And also rain events, anytime there's a little bit of stain to the water, channel catfish fishing can be excellent. As for fishing, uh, the best channel catfish waters in the state, there are quite a few good waters statewide. In the western part of the state, the Allegheny River, 
Um, Lake Arthur and Shenango River Lake have very good channel catfish populations. If you're looking for bigger fish in the western part of the state, Mahoning Creek Lake could be an excellent place to go. In the eastern and central part of the state, um, Lake Nakamixon, Chester Octorar Reservoir, and Blue Marsh Lake have excellent uh, numbers and some decent sized channel catfish. Um, however, for great fishery, the North Branch Susquehanna has absolutely loaded with catfish. The next species that we will talk about today is the flathead catfish. The scientific name is Pilodictus oliveris. This is a large species of catfish that routinely exceeds 20 pounds and sometimes gets much larger. It's a native species to the Ohio River Basin in Pennsylvania and is considered highly invasive in the Delaware and Susquehanna rivers and their basins. Uh, the species is not stocked in Pennsylvania. Um, it reproduces naturally in the river systems it occurs and in a few lakes. Uh, the state record fish was broken last year in 2020. It was a 56 pound, three ounce fish from the Schuylkill River. And I wouldn't ex be surprised to see that broken again in the near future. Um, the world record fish was a 123 pounder out of Elk City in Kansas. As with channel catfish, we've been doing quite a bit of research on flathead catfish age and growth. Uh, in the native areas of the state in the Ohio River Basin, we have very slow growth. It typically takes 15 years for a fish to reach 24 inches in length. However, in the Susquehanna Basin, where they're invasive, uh, typically only takes about five years for fish to get up to 35 inches in length. Um, Fish in the Ohio River Basin are extremely long-lived. We've seen numerous fish over 30 years old and recently aged one to 52 years of age. That fish was the oldest flathead catfish ever recorded and beats the previous one from literature by 18 years. However, in the Susquehanna po population, the fish are typically less than 10 years of age. We've only recorded them to about 18 years of age. However, in both systems, Mortality rates are typically low, um, typically less than 5% annually out here in the Ohio Basin, and rates of around 15% uh, in the Susquehanna Basin. This is just an example of how we age catfish. These are a couple of images of flathead catfish otolus. Fish on the left is from a native population in the Allegheny River. Uh, we aged this fish to 37 years of age. It was uh, 40 inches and 31 pounds. However, on the right is a 13-year-old fish from the Susquehanna River. And it was 46 inches and 56 pounds. So it shows to illustrate the differences in age and growth between the two basins. For me, fishing for flathead catfish has become an obsession. And if you're going to get into flathead catfishing, you'll begin to notice that it probably costs more money, sleep, and time than fishing for channel and channel catfish or bullheads. Um, one of the main reasons it costs more time is involves bait collection. Uh, flatheads love big live baits, and these aren't often available at every store, so you have to go out and catch your own bait a lot of the times, and this involves either seining for suckers, cast netting for shad, um, or catching bluegill. However, they'll eat pretty much any species. Uh, for example, I used about 21 different species for flathead bait in 2020. However, as you can see, shad, 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 those are my favorite baits to use. As for cut bait, um, fresh cut bait often works well, uh, particularly cut shad. However, cut trout can also work excellent as flathead bait. And as I said, Getting bait can be the most difficult part of flathead fishing. Gear for flathead catfish. I recommend medium heavy to heavy action rods and reels. Uh, you can use spinning reels, but I would prefer bait casters. Um, heavy mono or braid, such as 25 to 50 pound test, or even more. Um, you want to get heavy sinkers, at least three ounces, um, that can keep your weight down, bait down near the bottom. Um, and not let it, the bait swim around too much into snags. I prefer big hooks, size 7-odd or larger. Circle hooks or J-hooks are both acceptable. 
Slip floats are an important part of fishing for catfish. This allows your bait to be suspended slightly above the bottom. I put a question mark by rattles because some people love them, so others don't. Uh, I haven't had particularly too much success with these. Uh, if you're fishing from a boat, you really want to have a sturdy rod holder. You do not want your rod to get pulled in by a big flathead. And also, if you're fishing from a boat, a good fish finder with side scan sonar helps you figure out where these fish live. I like to begin fishing flathead catfish in the spring. Water temperatures typically get above 50 degrees. I typically quit in the fall when they're back down to around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I think the best time each year are the spring uh, and the pre-spawn time, which is typically around late May, early June. Uh, they typically feed heavily at that time. However, I would recommend avoiding the spawn. When the fish go into the spawning mode in mid to late June, flathead catfish bite really shuts down. And then again in the fall, when water temperatures start to go down in the fall, uh, you have an excellent opportunity to catch flathead catfish in October and even into early November. Um, changes in water levels can also bring about good flathead catfish, and particularly if you get a, a good little rain that adds some current. As to where I would fish in in any lake or river, I would target structure, structure, and more structure. These fish typically are around bridge pilings, sunken barges, big rocks, creek mouths. Uh, changes in depth are also good spots. As for the best fishing waters for flathead catfish in Pennsylvania, you have the Three River System here in the southwest, uh, the lower and middle Susquehanna, as well as the Schuylkill River. And there's an improving fishery now on the Delaware River. Last but not least, we're going to talk about blue catfish. Blue catfish are native to the Ohio River Basin in Pennsylvania. Uh, they were documented in the Ohio, Lower Allegheny, and the Monongahela Rivers in the 1800s. However, they've been considered extirpated here since that time. Uh, they're invasive in the Atlantic Basin, but they're not considered established in Pennsylvania. Uh, for example, in the Chesapeake Bay and its tributaries, almost 75% of the biomass consists of blue catfish um, these days. As I mentioned, these things are considered extirpated in Pennsylvania. Uh, in the Ohio Basin. Um, West Virginia, however, stocked approximately 43,000 fingerlings from 2013 to 2015 in the New Cumberland Pool, which spans the Ohio-Pennsylvania- West Virginia line. And these fish started showing up in 2019 and 2020, and we have about 15 that have been captured at that, that, since that time. Due to the angler interest and the survival of some of the blue catfish fingerlings from the West Virginia stockings, uh, the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission drafted a blue catfish restoration plan this past fall. Um, the goal of this is to reestablish a naturally reproducing population of blue catfish in the Three River system. And that's about all I can say about it right now as it's currently an internal agency review. So why are blue catfish popular with anglers in Pennsylvania? Well, they're the largest North American catfish. They can get up to over 140 pounds. Um, and they also provide uh, something that's fairly unique is it a winter fishery. Um, blue catfish like this 80 pounder can regularly be caught in December and January. So there's two reasons why I've catfish anglers are really interested in seeing these fish come back to Pennsylvania. Right now, really the only place where you might run into a blue catfish in Pennsylvania is in the Ohio River below Montgomery Dam. But if a fishery develops, these are some tactics you may want to use. For small fish, gear should be similar to what you use for channel catfish. Uh, for bigger fish, use flathead gear or even bigger, heavier equipment. Uh, bait can vary depending on the size of the fish. Um, your small ones will eat a wide variety of foods, similar to channels. However, the larger fish are typically caught on cut bait, um, either shad, skipjack herring, or bluegill. Um, locations to target include tailwaters below dams, uh, deep holes and ledges, and warm water discharges. Now, if you're fishing from a boat, pay particular attention to your fish finder as blues will often suspend in the water column, so you may not want to anchor, you may want to drift fish for them.
With that, that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, please submit them in written form to the panel as instructed. And thank you for your attention and interest.